Hi, I'm Susan Gross-Close, Associate Director of Connectional Ministries for the Houston Conference uh, and work in the area of discipleship. We are excited for jubilation, uh, May 2nd through 4th in 2022. I am with Kathy Phillips this afternoon. She is going to be sharing a little bit about herself and what she's planning and it and looking forward to for jubilation. So Kathy, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, hello, Susan. It's good to see you again. We've worked together and uh, it's a pleasure to be invited to jubilation. I'm just glad to be alive in 2022. I mean, I remember <laughs> looking back and thinking those, those years would never come. And I am now uh, a member of the Medicare generation and uh, didn't think I would get here and can't believe how fast it happened. So uh, I feel like I'm gonna be with my people uh, when I'm together with senior adults. Um, I am Kathy Lee, that was my maiden name and added Phillips uh, when I married Jerry Phillips in 1986. We um, had a good marriage, enjoyed each other. I am a Christian educator uh, graduated from Scarrett College, so naturally the people you meet are going to be in the church, and I married a minister. Said I never would, but married a preacher, and um, unfortunately he had a heart that was failing uh, only six years after we got married, and uh, his ejection fraction, if you know anything about that, got down to 12%. That's the ability of the heart to pump. The only um, answer to that problem is a heart transplant. And he waited in the hospital in, in intensive care for three months uh, and a heart finally came uh, from a 24 year old woman who was killed in a car accident. It broke my heart. She left behind two children under five years old and it, um, you kind of have to get your head straight and, and know that your need didn't cause that. But uh, the good thing, the silver and the slop was that she was able to help eight different people that night with organs that came from her body. And uh, Jerry got the heart. And it was an amazing thing to watch. I would love to uh, write a story, the movie of the week, and uh, tell that because it, it was a fascinating story. It would have been far more fascinating had it happened to someone else. <laughs> and I could have been close to that. But he passed away in 1992. And um, I turned to something I always wanted to do, and that's writing. And I had been doing that, but then I became very serious about it. Um, the first story I sold was to Guidepost. And uh, people told me, you'll wallpaper your house with rejection slips before you ever get accepted to anything. And Guidepost is the biggest of the biggest, and you will never get accepted to, to that. And I got accepted, and uh, that gave me the courage to keep going. And so now I have four books. I hope to have five by the time um, I'm there and uh, working on a sixth one after that. My uh, first book is called, and we'll, you'll learn about this, Silver in the Slop. Now, I don't know how many of you grew up on a farm or know um, a lot about pigs, but I did. And I know uh, I'm a good respecting country girl, so I know a lot about slop and what it is. And we were a very poor family and we reached a point where we couldn't even afford to buy slop to feed, I mean, or you know, anything to feed the pigs that we were raising. So we made an arrangement with a local restaurant to get their um, scraps from uh, their uh, buffet on Sundays every week. And that was, if you could have uh, judged slop in Munin, Georgia, that was the best. And uh, 
we were really glad to take our truck, old gray GMC truck, beat up farm truck, and um, had a hole in the muffler. So they knew when we were coming. And we b backed up to the edge of that uh, restaurant's back porch, and they poured uh, all kinds of scraps, blueberry muffins, chicken, you know, salads, everything. Pigs don't, pigs aren't choosy. The one thing they wouldn't eat, though, is what um, makes my story, because we went back to our uh, home and backed up to the pig, pig pen and dumped the slop into the trough. And those pigs, oh, were so excited. They jumped up, they ran, they slurped, they guzzled, they nudged each other out of the way, almost getting into a fight and acting like pigs to get that food. But as the food disappeared, I noticed, especially the first time, what is that in the bottom of that trough? I can't believe there's something that pigs don't eat. And my father said, get down there and get that stuff and see what it is. Anybody got an idea what it was? It was um, genuine Noonan House Restaurant silverware from the uh, place where we got the slop. Best boys were busy, you know, keeping up with the Sunday buffet crowds and they would accidentally uh, brush a, a utensil in with uh, the mashed potatoes or, you know, something like that. I would jump down and get it. We would uh, soak it in Clorox, wash, soak, wash. And uh, by the end of the summer, we had a full setting for eight. It was very impressive. That was the best stuff we ever had. And offered it back to the uh, owner. He didn't want it for some reason, just knowing it had been in the pig slot, you know. And um, I wrote that story after Jerry died. And it's about looking for the good in every situation. Doesn't matter how bad the situation is. There is something in there that God intends for you to see learn uh, and input into your mind and your faith and that will bring you forward and you will be stronger in faith and stronger in your relationship with God. I promise you it's there. So we will be talking about some of that and um, the joy that a Christian can have all the time, even when um, things aren't going so well, but the Christian knows that we give thanks for everything because God is with us in everything. And I think the most jubilant I've been uh, recently is when the Braves won the World Series. And I, uh, my roommate and I were jumping around so um, so much and screaming like we just never have. My dog was standing in a corner looking totally afraid that we had just slipped into a different personality, but uh, that jubilation feels wonderful. We're looking forward to more stories, uh, more insights and little spiritual nuggets that you have. So uh, anything else you wanna share with us about as you're thinking about jubilation? I want you to come, um, not be afraid of the the COVID variants. You know, we're going to do the best we can to uh, protect everything. I've got friends at the CDC that will give me the latest information. Um, I want you to come and have a good time and know that uh, you're an average person just like I am. And God can use you in amazing ways. I put something on Facebook last week that was a story that I had forgotten about, but it was in my memories on Facebook. Uh, I got to meet one of the sisters of George Beverly Shea a few years ago. And I said, oh, wow, that man, that voice, he's just so, was he always completely perfect as a child? And, and she said, no, no, no. He was, a, he was a regular boy. In fact, he was so much trouble. My mother, our mother threatened to sit on him if he didn't learn to behave himself. Oh, no. I said, George Beverly Shea. And she said, you know, I mean, like uh, all the things that he sings, I mean, just think how great thou art. And I'd rather have Jesus and, and these things. And he's up there with Billy Graham. And um, I just said, did she ever 
have to sit on him? She said, yes. I said, so he was a regular kid like the rest of us. And she said, yes. And I said, and God uses regular people like George Beverly Shea, who was misbehaving so much his mother had to sit on him. And I said, that thrills me more than you can know that God can do just incredible things through the average person. My mother never sat on me. She probably should have. I don't know. But uh, if George Beverly Shea can uh, come through and do the things he, he did, I'm ready to see what all of us can do when we get together. Well, God is amazing. And God uses each one of us in amazing ways. We are looking forward to celebrating Jubilation 20th anniversary. We are looking forward to hearing more stories from you and more insights and learning and thinking together and fellowshipping. Uh, so plan to join us. There is information and registration link in the comments below. So we'll see you uh, May 1st, uh, May 2nd through 4th at Black Fox Lodge in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. God bless.